Labor should be streets ahead in, in the polls on those factors that, that you talk about, but you're not, and this is going to be a close election. That's a concern and not a great indictment, is it? Well, it is a close election and every vote counts, so I really want to urge voters between now and 6pm on Saturday to cast your vote for Labor. If you want a better, um, better future for Australia, if you want a little bit of pressure taken off the cost of living, if you want to see pay rises for those mm. low-paid workers, if you want to see cheaper power, cheaper childcare, cheaper medicines, cheaper electric vehicles, uh, if you want to see um, an end to the climate wars, that means a vote for Labor. OK, well, we've seen a rise of the independents here and it's no mistake that these teal independents are all strong, smart women. This is a blight on the major parties, isn't it? Even, even Labor. What do you think it says? Well, I don't think... I think it certainly says something about the Liberal Party, that women who would traditionally feel more comfortable in the Liberal Party don't want to be Liberal Party members and they don't want to be Liberal Party candidates and they don't want to vote for the Liberal Party. If you look at the Labor Party, in contrast, we are almost 50% female already. Our, our, um, the Senate and the House of Representatives are currently about 48% female. We hope to get to our 50-50 target years ahead of schedule. Uh, I think there is a, a place for women in a Labor Party that represents Australian women. We've got almost double the spending plan on violence against women initiatives compared with the government. We would fully... Um, fully fund the National Plan on Violence Against Women and Their Children, 500 extra community workers, uh, 4,000 extra public housing dwellings, $100 million for emergency accommodation. We've got real plans to reduce the gender pay gap um, by making sure that it's an object of the Fair Work Act, making sure that we've got expert panels making decisions about these female-dominated industries. Mm. Uh, we have real plans that would help Australian women and Part of the reason for that is because we've got more women sitting around the decision-making table. We've got strong leaders like Penny Wong and Katie Gallagher who um, will, you know, continue to make a, an amazing contribution to uh, po the policies of a Labor government, making sure that uh, they're, you know, doing a great job in foreign policy and finance, but also representing the views of half the mm. population. It sounds like voters would have loved a, a female candidate for PM this time around. Were they denied that unfairly? Well, I, I think um, the, the very clear choice is between three more years of Scott Morrison, who's never there when you need him, and Anthony Albanese, who'll show up, step up, take responsibility, and who's got a plan to make life a little bit easier for ordinary Australian families. Uh, I think there's... Um, for, for me, uh, there's no contest on Saturday. It's very clear that ScoMo's got to go and Anthony, um, who's got a plan, should yeah. be given a go. Do you, what do you think about this time and last time? Does it feel different? Do you think you, you've got this one pretty close to being in the bag? Last time felt close and this time feels close. Um, that's why all of us who want to change are working so very hard every minute till the polls close at 6pm on Saturday for a Labor win because we, we do really think um, this is an amazing country, it's a wonderful country and it could be even better with a better government. Tanya Pulvisek, thank you for your time today. Thank you, Laura.